Hey guys, today we are going to document the rise and fall of the most popular Magic the Gathering trading platform of all time. I guess I would say online trading platform. It started with a fundraiser and it ended with pretty much a fundraiser. So Pico Trade started with a very smart marketing plan. Their marketing plan would be they would contact as many MTG quote celebrities as possible, give them Pico points, and hope that they would make videos telling their subscribers to join. Now, they would also get points. So if a YouTuber told a member, one of their fans, hey, I want you to join. You get points and I get points. So back then, I feel like it was 250 or 300 points. The most recent amount of points I have seen is 350 points. So both people get points. The person who told you to subscribe and the subscriber themselves. So all of these points are being generated. All this money is being fundraised by people like you. The subscriber. Now the model was not inherently wrong. It just didn't really have a way to get rid of points until recently. Eventually the Pico Trade will be net neutral again. They are shedding a ton of points via I guess a lottery system where you put your points in and you have a chance to win a card. Uh, the sleeves which are very expensive. I believe they also had play mats at one point. And most two main ways, promotion. So you would have to promote a trade sometimes two to three times depending on what you wanted to trade. And we can see historically that in 2012 it just began, 2013 it was still kind of not popular. But around 2014, 2015 we saw a tremendous amount of YouTubers, a tremendous amount of MTG personalities including Wizards of the Coast themselves. I remember seeing a Wizards of the Coast commercial for Pico Trade in Vintage Super League or something like that. So they made it. I mean, they got to be on the Wizards of the Coast YouTube channel. And even if you say, oh, only Vintage League sp sponsored it, it's still on the main channel. I believe you can watch the older Vintage Leagues or and see that they were indeed a sponsor. So in 2014, they started to blow up and 2015 is when they just got to their insane, insane amounts of money or being put into the system. Now, you might ask what could have been done to save it or what could have been done. It's very simple. If they had the same point mechanics or point exits that they have today back then yes they would grow they would not grow as fast but they would keep most of its members and the currency would actually still be worth not a dollar right it's never going to be worth a dollar when you're giving everyone and their moms free points you give reddit commenters free po free points for saying that pico trade's amazing that's why you saw so many um, positive feedbacks on pico trade was because redditors would actually get points for saying good stuff or even upvoting you upvoted here's some points and you got points for if you were sending fakes and the person disputes it you got points for that you got points if you are a content writer you got points if you are a community member you got points if you were i don't know like you could be a dinosaur and you would be getting points under the system and most importantly, you got points by signing other people up. The key here is anyone can do it. So if I sign you up, then you sign two friends up, and those two friends send two more friends up. Not exactly a, a multi-level marketing scheme because down the chain, they don't pay points up. But at the same time, similar, I would say, especially if you had the ability to get 5,000 people, which... If legend holds true, one YouTuber was able to convince 5,000 of their subscribers to sign up and then they got all the points, right? Which was a lot of points. They, they signed up so many people that Pico Trade made, and again, this is legend, I haven't seen this landing page, but they made a landing page 
thanking that member because they know how they sign up because you have a link with your name, Pico Trade backslash, I assume, point slash backslash you quote YouTube channel. Now, let me get to the aspect where so many people are willing to die by Puka. Um, it's good when you first start. Just like any pyramid scheme, any scam, and if you're one of the first users, it's good. What it sucks for is all the people paying the monthly fees now, and all the people paying the huge promotional. I mean, those promotional points are insane. They are absolutely insane, just the amount of promotional points that you would need to trade something. Um, I mean, if you wanted something that was $5, you're essentially having to trade $15 of Pico points to even get close to getting, getting the card sent to you. And that to me is depreciation of assets. And they knew what they were doing. Every, every currency, every online currency that's not regulated, or even maybe regulated, maybe even it's even worse for those that are regulated. The fastest way to make money is to depreciate your currency. Meaning if a hundred points was a dollar and you were able to make a hundred points only fifty cents, you get to keep the fifty cents, which done enough times means you made five million dollars, like Eric, the owner of Pico Trade. So you might be like, oh, okay, what about this system? What about that system? I don't use systems uh, mainly because I live in Houston. Houston is the third largest city as over 2 million people. We are fortunate enough to have many, many local game stores and because of competition or other stuff, the buy listing, I mean, it's not as lucrative, but I know it's guaranteed. I get cash in my hand. I know I can go there anytime I want. I can make the 45 minute drive to Scarsdale, go there, sell the cards, get cash in hand. Everyone's happy. They're happy. I'm happy. There doesn't need to be any, you know, there doesn't have to be a exchange. So here's the problem. The problem is not when something starts. When something starts, it's always amazing. It's always incredible. When Herbalife started or Mary Kay, those people, yes, they made a ton of money. They made a killing. The problem is when it stops. So the problem is not when Bernie Madoff started, right? Everyone was getting their 10 or 15 or 20% returns every single year, and they were being paid out. So if you started in the beginning with Bernie, assuming you got 15% payoff, after 10 years, you are way, I mean, you doubled your investment after 10 years, which is incredible. Right, every single year to get the same amount. So when it comes down to when it, when it comes down to it, it's not when you start that you should be worried. If you are one of the first people to invest in Pico Trade, if you're one of the first people to invest in Bernie Madoff, you're going to make your money back because it will last long enough for you to make your money back. Bernie was in business for how long? If you invested with him from the very beginning, you would have tripled, quadrupled, some insane amount. It's the problem is when the music stops and there's no chairs left. Somebody is left with a lot of Puka points that are now worthless by definition. Now, of course, Puka solution is to get rid of these points as fast as they can, but we'll see. I mean, we will see. Anyway, that is it. Leave me a comment below. This is just a video telling you my stance on all this stuff. Like, if someone is asking you for donations to build their website, then in my opinion, they don't believe in the website enough or the app or whatever it is to put their own money in. And if they're taking $5 million and they are taking a ton of money out and they're paying people not in cash, but in points, although they have five million in cash, apparently, that's a boat that's ready to. That is the Titanic, and it's already hit the iceberg. And at that point, they're just trying to get on the lifeboats, and not everyone can get on a lifeboat. The majority of people will not have lifeboats. And you might think, "Oh, Pico was amazing for me. It was great, great for you, but at whose expense?" 
the people who Puka ripped off the most, they're never going to talk about it because it's embarrassment. It's scamming 101. The people who have been scammed typically don't talk about it. That's why Herbalife targets a lot of uh, poor income fam- uh, income communities, um, largely Hispanic now, because they are too proud to admit that they've been scammed. So when someone's like, oh, is Herbalife a good idea? Even though they know it's a bad idea, they're just like, oh yeah, I made money from it. Uh, and that's the same thing with Pico Trade is it has uh, got to the point that it's convinced people that it's convinced people who know they've been scammed that they got a good deal. And that's when you know something is really bad. Anyway, bye guys.